Harry's Wife, Part 105.1 The Sussex Series He Leaves Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, and welcome to the mini-series, The Sussex Series, where I, with my unrivaled knowledge of narcissism, are going to take you through certain scenarios involving Harry and Harry's wife. Those three scenarios are the potential outcome for the dynamic between intimate partner primary source victim, Harry, and the narcissist, Harry's wife. Because the dynamic is narcissist and IPPS, the outcomes are either he leaves, she dumps, or he disengages from him, or the roller coaster ride continues until one of them shuffles off this mortal coil. In order to understand all of that, I'm going to give you a deep dive into what could well happen applying my knowledge of narcissism. Understanding narcissism really does give you insight into why a relationship functions as it does and where it may well end up. Through my work, I've allowed millions of people to understand narcissism and access freedom. I've helped, through personal consultation, thousands of people make sense of the mess they found themselves in to ensure that they move away from the narcissist and the effect of the narcissist to make sense of themselves and seize the power by achieving freedom. You should not underestimate the power of my work to bring clarity, understanding and freedom. And my work about Harry's wife allows people not only to understand just why she does as she does, but also is to enable them to apply that to their own circumstances, to reach those individuals as an extension of my legacy, so they understand that when they listen to me talk about Harry's wife, how I could be talking about their relationship with their spouse, their boyfriend, their girlfriend, a brother, a sister, a parent, a co-worker, a colleague, a neighbor. Narcissism is all-pervasive, and having an understanding is absolutely crucial to making your way through the world. Now, for the purposes of this series, we have to have, in essence, a baseline scenario. Otherwise, I would end up with so many proliferations of, if you like, parallel universes, so that there would be so many potential different outcomes based upon differing facts about their relationship. And therefore, what I have done is select a most likely outcome in terms of what we are dealing with, which is also commensurate with the situation that many people find themselves in. That way, I'm going to be able to give you the clearest outcome of what is going on, coupled with information that's most applicable to people's circumstances. Now, of course, many of you are not multimillionaires that carry titles, and operate in the rarefied atmosphere of celebrity dom. But ultimately, that, whilst has some relevance, isn't the be-all and end-all. It's the nature of the dynamic and the facts within it which are of importance. So the baseline scenario... What does this baseline scenario look like? Well, he decides that the marriage is over... But he tells her that it is over and what is his intentions. He leaves the marital home. He has the resources to find an alternative home somewhere in the near vicinity of the marital home. The children do actually exist and they remain with Harry's wife, with Harry wanting to maintain contact, visitation maybe shared custody arrangements. He has access to considerable resources, either of his own or he's helped out by King Charles, for example. And Harry's wife has not been courting a replacement during the 
sustained devaluation. There might have been some flirtations, but there's nothing solid going on in the background. That's important to make that a part of the baseline scenario, as that has a considerable impact upon how she would behave, which I will explain in due course. So that's our baseline scenario. Of course, there are other factors that could be utilized as part of that baseline scenario, but as I have explained, we would end up with so many different permutations that it would take a long time to go through each and every one. So what I've done is select the most likely one to help you understand what's likely to happen here if Harry were to leave, and also to help you understand how a narcissist responds in such a situation. So there we are with our baseline scenario. So the next question becomes, what would make Harry leave? As I've explained elsewhere in my work, that when it comes to the three dynamics post-sustained devaluation involving a narcissist and the victim, the victim escaping is the most unusual one. It's not that it's ultra-rare, it happens. But compared to the other outcomes, it's the least likely of the three. It's more likely the narcissist gets rid, and it's more likely that the relationship continues as a roller coaster. But victims do escape. Sometimes it occurs as a consequence of their own volition. They essentially wake up to what's going on and decide, enough. Sometimes it's a consequence of having discussions with friends and family because they're not happy, and with comments made by other people, they're encouraged to make a break for the border. In other instances, there's an intervention. This is more usually the case when the individual concerned has broken down or is close to breaking down, and they're effectively extracted from the grip of the narcissist. There is potential for all that to happen with Harry, but I haven't selected it here as a baseline scenario. Instead, the decision has been made by him. He decides that it's time for him to go. There are lots of different things that could cause a victim to suddenly realise that it's time to go. But the point is, this never happens in the seduction period. It never happens during the golden period. Why? Everything's wonderful, so why would you go? Even where you might think someone's a little bit over the top, you don't depart, because it feels so good, and the combination of emotional thinking. Harry, of course, hasn't departed at the first sign of trouble. Again, it is highly unlikely that any victim would do that, particularly where they're empathic, because rather than walk away from it and say, well, you can fuck this shit sky high, I'm not being treated like this, an empathic victim, as a consequence of the corruption of both their empathic and narcissistic traits by their emotional thinking, stays in the game. Why has it gone wrong? How can we fix it? How can we get back to the golden period? Have I done something wrong? How can they not see that what they're doing is problematic? We must be able to make this person see. And then, of course, along comes a respite period and everything's good for a little period of time. See, we can get it back. And therefore, the invested victim, who's invested emotionally, psychologically, monetarily, maybe invested with regard to friends, family, and of course children, doesn't just walk away at the first sign of trouble, but hangs in there, often for years, trying to resolve the issue. Harry has been hanging in there so far, trying to resolve the issues. But now there comes a point where enough is enough, and he has made that decision that he's exiting. What has caused that? Well, clearly, it's going to be Harry's wife's behaviour. But what would that look like? There are two branches to her behaviour that would cause him sufficient consternation to cause him to want to leave the relationship. One, her behaviour towards him. Two, her behaviour towards others. The kids, family, friends, the public, staff. What about her behaviour towards him? She is a middle-mid-range narcissist. That means she could be either A, think she's a really kind and helpful person, or B, is prone to being a crybaby who thinks the world is against her and the universe has cursed her. I haven't yet told you which she is, and for the purpose of this exercise, it's not entirely crucial to have that detail. 
simply to understand that she's middle mid range because the branches of A and B are very similar. This means that there can be heated fury, but largely she's passive aggressive. Both will use pity plays. Both think that they're decent people. They think that they're kind, that they're empathic, and of course that they haven't done anything wrong and can't understand why everybody else has got it in for them. There is a substantial victim mentality, of course. I've only been a good person and I can't understand why this person is treating me in this way. What would she have done towards Harry that will have caused him to reach this point of wanting to leave? She would have lied to him. She will have triangulated him. She'll have triangulated him with money. We need more. Why haven't you got more? Why aren't you pulling your weight in terms of bringing it in like I am? Whether that's true or not, it doesn't matter. She'll triangulate him with people. I wish you'd be more like Marcus. Why can't you be more like William? Etc. She would triangulate him with other people, perhaps by being flirtatious with them in front of him. There's possible physical violence. Although this is not a go-to for the middle mid-ranger on a common basis, it's not something that would never happen, and therefore there is a risk that it would occur. We're not talking going berserk in a boxing match style, but it would be more pushing, shoving, possibly spitting, scratching, slapping, possibly, if really pushed with heated fury, the use of a weapon. You're not going to get a toe-to-toe -to -toe fight, however. There'll be future faking. There will be plenty of silent treatments. Ignoring him in person as he follows her around the Monte Shicho mansion, not talking to him, ignoring his calls, ignoring his text messages, disappearing for periods of time so that he can't find her. Sitting there, arms folded and sulking, glaring at him, cold shoulder him. He'll have a lot of that. There will be arguments. He'll be invalidated. He'll be insulted. He'll be belittled. She will deny things that he may ask her, what has she been doing? She will repeatedly use guilt against him. If it wasn't for you, look at everything that I've done for us, Harry. What are you doing for this family? She will provoke him. There'll be a projection of her own behaviours. She will blame shift repeatedly, pointing out how it's his fault that things aren't working out, how if he learned to give better speeches, how if he dressed better, how if he made more of an effort to get to know people, if he made more of an effort to embrace the A-listers, things would be a lot better, rather than him staying at home and wanting to go on the beach with the kids or playing on the Xbox. She will use threat. you better shape up or I'm out of here. You know I could find anybody I wanted. They'd also be bringing up the past in the sense of, well, look what happened to Trevor when he didn't do what I wanted. You don't want to end up like him, do you? There'll be the revision of history, which will leave his head in a clouded fog. He'll be gaslighted. There'll be shouting, plenty of pity plays. I joined your family and I did everything that I could and the least you could do was support me. I'm out there pulling up trees, kicking ass, trying to ensure that our brand succeeds and what are you doing? Sitting at home eating cookies. She, she will tell him that he's not good enough. There'll be deflection, isolation. Sexual withdrawal, that spicy poontang taken off the menu. There'll be false accusations. He'll be accused of not pulling his weight, of flirting with people, of ignoring her, of not helping out. She'll bring up the past. She'll use his vulnerabilities against him with regard to the loss of his mother and his own mental health issues. There will be an issue with regard to excessive spending. She goes through it like there's no tomorrow, and that will be a repeated point of consternation for him. Also, he will very well realise that he has been played. These are the majority behaviours that he's likely to experience, which are, of course, all forms of abuse. And therefore, having been subjected to all of those behaviours, that causes him considerable concerns. And the cumulative effect of that has driven him to the point of, I can't take any more of this. He will have tried to address these things. He'll try to talk to her about it. He'll have tried to placate and appease, and it'll have got him nowhere. And eventually, confused, bedraggled, possibly as a consequence of having the occasional discussions with people close to him, won't be William because they're barely talking, but Eugenie, for example, or maybe one of his mates who he still has some degree of contact with, it causes him to realise, I'm not putting up this any longer.
But it won't just be her behaviour towards him. Also into the mix is the way that she behaves towards other people. Although Harry has become something of a twat as a consequence of the behaviour of his wife and the erosion of his emotional empathy, he essentially has decent behaviours there. And it was seen in the past. Yes, every once in a while as an erosion of emotional empathy, he's acted out, if we can describe it that way. But there's a fundamental foundation of decency about him, which was seen repeatedly when he was within the model of the royal family. The fact that her behaviours, such as not helping out with the children, possibly criticising the children, foisting them onto Harry all of the time while she swans off on photo shoots and making industrial beige speeches, would mean that he feels like he's the one that's carrying the burden and that she's not only not lifting, uh, pulling her own weight with regard to helping out the children, but actually having little to do with them at all. The comments that she's made about family he might start to wonder why it really is the case that he's not met Thomas Markle and that what she said by way of smear may not wow, have the effect as he starts to wake up as it once did. He might start to think to himself, hang on a second, we don't have any family really anymore. And I know I've not really done anything, I've not been the best, but all of this has been stemmed from what she's told me. And therefore, the way that she goes on about her own family and also, more importantly, his own family, because, of course, he was once very close to Prince William and the Princess of Wales, and therefore her continuing smearing, disparaging comments, falsification of allegations against them, may well ultimately be the straw that broke the camel's back with regard to interactions with the family. It could be that she's spending an excessive amount of time with people that he thinks isn't worthwhile, her relentless pursuit of becoming famous through the A-list, for example. Treatment of staff could be an issue. Behind closed doors, as we have known of the bullying allegations with the Buckingham Palace staff, the way that she behaved in Australia at the governor's house, it is undoubtedly the case that people will be shouted at, they'll be talked down to, they'll be treated in a sniffy manner, and he may well just see that that's just indecent to continue behaving that way. There'll be overall, with regard to the treatment of people that they work with, haughtiness, being demanding, ordering people around, having effectively tantrums, whining about people not doing things. Ultimately, he looks and thinks, I don't like the way that you deal with other people. Another factor also that could go into the mix is the fact that he sees she's waning in popularity. And he started to see that people don't like her. And it's nothing to do with them being racist or haters, but he starts to realise, actually, I don't really like you anymore, and I can understand why other people won't like you because of the way that you treat people. And it might just occur to him, although this is less likely, but it might just occur to him that his own situation is being affected because he's being dragged down by her. This is more likely if somebody has whispered some wise words in his ears and has pointed out, look, Harry, you were essentially well-liked by everybody as the playboy prince, and since you've got with her, well, most people think that you're an asshole. Do you want that to continue? It's her that's dragging you down, mate. And that may cause him to realise, actually, yes, she has this relentless pursuit of fame and being thirsty for fame and money, and that alongside her waning popularity, he thinks to himself, well, she said that we were going to move across here for a quieter life, for privacy. I was thinking about wanting to go to Africa, but she kiboshed that. She's missold me. She promised me that we would be free to do our own thing, away from the glare of publicity, that we would stand on our own two feet. But in fact, all we seem to do is court publicity, fall out with people, and she just runs around relentlessly promoting herself. I don't want that. I thought that's what we were going to leave behind. And again, realisation may come, probably helped by somebody making these points to him also. There'll be a combination of him waking up of his own accord, along with a little bit of gentle pushing in that direction. A further aspect that may well cause him to leave and add it into this mixture is that he ultimately may well be uncomfortable with what we might describe as her black ops. For instance, her repeated smearing of the royal family. The use of certain third parties to boost her popularity stroke slap down dissenting voices in a manner which is not commensurate with the concept of 
free speech and avoiding misinformation, that her litigious nature starts to become a, a factor which he finds wearisome and various nefarious connections with people that he doesn't really like and doesn't approve of such behaviours. It's simply not cricket, old boy. Ultimately, it's likely to be a confluence of all of these things that I've mentioned. But ultimately, he's had enough, and therefore he has decided it's over. In the next part, I'm going to tell you about what her response is going to be when he walks out the door. Join me there.